Hey, Ron. Hey, Lou. You know, this is one of my favorite times of the year. Oh, Fall. Uh, the color of the leaves changing in the trees. Football is back. Foosball, the foosball. Now, last year, we did not do a whole lot of football stuff on our men show. No. Because we were kind of protesting. A little boycott. Uh, yeah. Um, I can't really speak for you, but I will be watching football this year, Ron. Uh, I I kind of almost have to. I'm in a couple different fantasy leagues, so... Mm -hmm. So you're forced. back to football. I'm kind of forced to watch a little bit of it. Well, forced... Uh, no, I'm not sure. Uh, when they show pictures of cheerleaders, I'm really interested. We're going to be talking about cheerleaders next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And our email addresses, if you would like to get a hold of us with questions, comments, concerns, whatever it might be, mine is Lou, L-O-U, at Men are so smart.com. Mine is Ronnie, R O N N I E. Okay. Men are so smart.com. Perfect. Ronnie, um, you know, as long as there's been sports on TV, there have been cheerleaders. Yes. Uh, I have, and I'm going to admit something I'm not really that ashamed of, but I have always been a fan of cheerleaders. They're very talented. When I was in high school, it was like one of my goals to date a cheerleader. Yeah, that was, they were a little out of my category. I was a band geek. Oh, that's right. That's so, right. Yeah, well, I was an yeah. athlete, so <laughs> I was hanging out with cheerleaders all Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, cheerleaders have always been a part of our lives growing up, as long as we can remember, going back to the Super Bowl number one. Yeah. Um, with Bart Starr and, and, and the Green Bay Packer cheerleaders. And Anyway, my point is this. I, at this point in time, have come to a conclusion that Cheerleaders no longer serve a purpose in professional sports. Here's what I believe. Mainly, they're a distraction. Uh, they take away from the game. They are used as sex symbols on television to get men to watch. And they, and they show, what, 10 seconds? I was telling Ronnie, uh, I was watching a game, it was either last Monday or Thursday night, and they did a cutaway to cheerleaders on the field, and there was about 12 or 13 of them in this group. Every one of them was blonde. Hmm. I was crazy. I yeah. was going crazy. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. I think that cheerleaders are faced with a terrible job. Uh, and for not much pay. Exactly. Yeah, for almost no pay. And they have to go through scrutiny like you cannot believe. I believe that that serves up a platform for discrimination, yeah. sexism, um, sexual harass harassment. There, there are too many doors that it opens nowadays, and I think that the, it's best that they just go away. Now... Do I mean that for high school and college and that? You know, I think that's a little bit different because that's not so much a job. Right. So It's, it's uh, a school activity. It, and it is, and it's endorsed by the school district. Right. So that leads me to believe that there's criteria that one has to meet in addition to being a scholar. Uh, one has to, you know... Uh, fit up to these certain things. Now, I will tell you, in professional sports, uh, I I did work. I worked for the Sacramento Kings. Mm -hmm. I had their bomb dog. We did the bomb dog stuff for the, the Kings for four years. Mm -hmm. They don't have cheerleaders. They call them uh, the dancers. They're dancers. They well, don't. They, <laughs> they don't stand on the sideline and cheer for the team. They're back in their dressing room and during intermissions and timeouts, they come out and they do, you know, their dance routines. And they're all uh, obviously extremely underpaid. They all have to have second jobs or third jobs. Yeah. Um, they are forced to do a lot of extracurricular stuff like new car dealerships when they open. They, right. they want three or four of the Kings dance team there. 
Um, it's a, and my daughter is very friendly. She went to uh, high school with one of the King's dancers and she was on the team for like eight years. Um, it's not a, but you know what? I guess she loved to dance. Uh, and so there's no greater, you know, stage to be on than in front of 18,000 people crowd, in a Kings yeah. game. Yeah. Well, I just don't think that it serves the purpose that it needs to. Um, you know, the cheerleaders that are at a, let's take, for instance, a, a, a high school game. All right. You know, they're encouraging the crowd to get involved. Um, they're, they're showing great team spirit and school spirit, which I'm 100% for. Um, and so I can understand that. But if you're going to sell sex, you're going to have to deal with the consequences in this day and age. That simple. I remember when the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders first came out, they were the most uh, scantily clad cheerleading oh, yeah. group of any of them. Uh, and they hired six foot tall blondes. Mm -hmm. And it was it was quite an impressive sight. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, especially for a God, I don't know what year that would have been. It would have been in the S mid 70s, maybe. Uh, and that was right in my that was right in my wheelhouse. So I enjoyed watching them, no right. doubt. As much as I love the cheerleaders, I think it's time for them to go away. Yeah. At least at the pro level. In my opinion. Yeah. And you're, you feel free to leave your comments below. Uh, uh, we do see them, and we will react to them. And in most cases, we will reply as quickly as we possibly can, if indeed it warrants uh, a reply. Right. Okay. <laughs> and please, don't be rude. All right, now, next up, football. We're talking football. Uh, I, I think you'd be ignoring the elephant in the room if we didn't discuss the Kaepernick-Nike situation, Ronnie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd like for you to give me some of your takes on what you think is happening. First of all, we'll put it under this umbrella. Uh, Nike took some hits when, this first, when the story first came out, uh, but as of the time of this recording, uh, it is a fact now that Nike has shown uh, they are up 31%. Yep. Big, they took a big jump, and they they took a big hit a day or two after the they announced, announced that mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick was going to be the face of Nike for this year, which is a big year. It's their 30th anniversary. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of a big thing. But, you know, Colin Kaepernick is... Uh, trust me, I'm a 49er fan, and so... I was rooting for him uh, while he was doing well. And then he was exposed as a quarterback who didn't much have, didn't have a great arm. He had one speed. He threw at one speed, mm -hmm. which was 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, some of his, he had no touch on any of his passes. And he was a running quarterback. And it doesn't take long for the NFL to adjust to that. You can get away with that in college in some levels because colleges they don't have the best athletes at every position nfl teams are based of the best of the best of the best mm -hmm. at their level at every single position and so it doesn't take long for teams to figure it out and like i said he was exposed and he no longer you know really couldn't function as a pro quarterback after that he seemed to get a little bitter and he came to practice one year with pig socks on they were oh, they were yeah. socks with pigs dressed as police officers and it was to show his disdain uh, disdain basically for the treatment of people of color by police officers um well if you go back and you look at statistics in the united states at least for oh, decades you'll see the police officers shoot more white people than they do people of color, all people of color. Shoot, they shoot more white people. And, hey, there's more white people out there, and I get it, but they still shoot more white people. So if if he wanted to make a social stand on something, how about, you know, putting some money into Chicago where the the black-on-black -black crime is Oops, over sorry. the top. It's absolutely over the top. Mm -hmm. 
So and or Detroit or Detroit with the water situation or Baltimore, there are plenty of cities where if you want to put your money where your mouth is, uh, there's there's plenty of cities that would be willing to take, and I think a lot of it has to do with education, starting at that level, you know, starting in the middle school even or earlier, and making sure kids stay in school and get an education and that they don't have to turn to a life of crime. They don't have to sell drugs, uh, which is inherently violent and dangerous. Um, then the, the next thing he did was uh, he donated $25,000 to uh, Asada Shakur. So she was convicted in 1973 of killing a police officer. And then she had, uh, I'm not necessarily saying that she was involved, but some a group broke her out of prison and she, uh, was, she was taken to Cuba, where she's now living just fine. He donated $25,000 to her foundation kind of to help support her in that. Um, Did you know that? Yeah, I, I think that's a little over the top. Um, you know, and hopefully, maybe he didn't know. Maybe he wasn't aware of that. Um, and he, I'm sure he has still quite a bit of money. He made something like $19 million in his last year. A lot pros. of people question if he's been on Nike's payroll all along. And very likely, and there's no doubt about it, he's making more money from Nike than he ever made in the pros. So, and how long did he play? Two seasons tops? I think he played three or four, honestly, but his last couple seasons were yeah. very dismal. Mm -hmm. um, so, the other thing, one of the things he did that I found pretty interesting was after a game, he came out and he's wearing a Malcolm X t shirt. I remember that. Malcolm X was talking to Fidel Castro on this t shirt. And so he says, hey, he supports Malcolm X's ideology. Okay, that's fine. You can support whatever ideology you want. However, the reporter that was talking to him made note that, hey, Fidel Castro is also on that shirt. And he goes, yeah, well, Malcolm X was talking to him. He goes, yeah, but are you aware of what you know, Fidel Castro is doing and what he does? And so Kaepernick, may, and I want to read this because it's the most... It's the craziest statement you could ever say. Okay. He said, you know, basically that Fidel Castro and Cuba are doing it better than, than the United States. First, he said that uh, Cuba has a higher literacy rate. In fact, he said that they're number one in the world in literacy. That is blatantly false. There is, they're not. Uh, next, and this is his quote, Cuba invests more money in education system than they do in their prison system. Well, we could do that also if we were, went around and had firing squads mm. and buried people in shallow graves. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of need for prisons when you don't have prisoners. Um, all you have to do is Google women in white in Cuba, and you will see the mistreatment of women by Castro's thugs in Cuba, uh, and again, I I don't know. Somebody is I, I obviously putting these these thoughts. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Is he just being misinformed? I think he's um, being misinformed. He has a, you know, he has a uh, girlfriend. Last time I checked, who was a uh, founding member of Black Lives Matter. Okay. And so they obviously they have their own agenda. Uh, they're not really too concerned about truths they're all about half truths and you know innuendo and so yeah the 100 percent truth is not necessarily important as long as their agenda is forwarded a little bit so i uh, you know what i just think it was a huge mistake by by nike if not for you know obviously there are enough people out there that are supporting colin kaepernick and that's fine you're allowed to support whatever candidate or whatever face of Nike you choose to support. But there are so many better choices like Pat Tillman. Do you remember him? I was just going to suggest that, Ron. Wow. Uh, I mean, here's a guy who had an extremely lucrative career in the NFL 
and left it to become an army ranger and was serve his country. Yes, serve his country and was killed in the line of duty. Um, another guy is that I'm very aware of because he was a 49ers, Glenn Coffey. Glenn Coffey also left the NFL and he was not, I mean, he was a running back and he was, he was pretty good and he was making a couple million dollars a year. He left it. He joined the army. He was in the army from 2013 to 2017. So he's back in the NFL. He's an unrestricted free agent, but he's obviously, he's well past his prime. Yeah. So the likelihood that he'll ever make any money, but I mean, how about some of the heroes from 9-11 that drove uh, Flight 93 into the ground instead of letting them uh, crash it into the White House? Mm -hmm. uh, the number of real heroes out there are countless, and they could have chosen much, much better. I think that sums it up. Um, I think that it's a, it's a, first of all, it's your choice, Nike, who you want Absolutely. to choose. It's not for either one of us to make that decision. Do we have the right to criticize that decision? You bet we do. Now, when you make that kind of a statement as, as Kaepernick has, you have the right to do so. However, and this is so key, I know people our age understand this, but maybe people that are in the younger demographic might not. You're free to say what you wish, but at the same time, you have to understand the repercussions of what you say. Yeah. And you, and you alone, are responsible. I get it. We hope you get it. There's going to be some pushback for sure. Yeah. And, you know, we are, if you don't support Nike, then you don't buy Nike products. Uh, that is up to you as a consumer as well. Right. That's how you make your statement. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's our football episode. Yep. Yeah. Kind of a Debbie Downer. It episode. was, huh? Go Giants, Ooh. go Jets. <laughs> there. That justifies us doing the whole episode. 18 minutes. All right. <clears throat> uh, we hope that you've enjoyed or learned or uh, formed an opinion or whatever the case may be. Uh, this has been another episode of Men Are So Smart. Our information is below. Our blogs, our email, our website, so on and so forth. Not the least of which is our sponsors. Right. Right up there somewhere. Yeah, right yeah. up there. Yeah. All right, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Enjoy the football season. We'll see you next time on Men Are So Smart. Bye-bye.